Welcome back. Chapter 25. I woke up in a sweat and waited for the flashes of a job. They didn't come, but something was wrong. Maybe something they did to me had a bad effect, bad after effect. Fate. He mumbled something I couldn't make out at all. It might have been, I'm sleeping, but could have also been, go screw. Something's wrong with me. I can feel my heart pumping quicker than normal, among other things. He sat up in bed with all sorts of naked torsos acting, action going on. Even sitting lean over as he was, there was just ribbed abdomen and my pulse beat a little quicker. You're sweating. I know. That's because something's wrong with me. I thought I already established that. He laid a hand on my forehead. You're warm. Ergo, the sweat. I watched as he dropped his hand and moved his beautifully masculine arm away from me. He had the nicest skin, all smooth and tan, except where the tattoos ripped across his shoulder. I didn't even know I liked tattoos until this very minute. I felt like I could stare at his chest for the rest of my life. You're looking at me like I'm a hamburger meat and you haven't, <laughs> you haven't had a meal in a while. No, I'm not. I turned my gaze quickly. I hadn't even realized he'd been assessing me as I stared. I knew you didn't look right. He got out of bed and I was grateful to see he had on a pair of nylon shorts. But still, way too much flesh available to stare at. Goddamn fucking Cupid. Seriously, are you sure? He came and stopped by my side of the bed. How are you feeling? Little excited, perhaps? I couldn't even answer. I was too mortified. I covered my face in my hands and groaned. I'd ask you some other questions to confirm, but I don't think it's necessary. This is one of his favorite hobbies. And then I remember mother's obvious infatuation. What if it was permanent? Is this going to go away? It'll wear off in a day or so, depending on your system. I've got some stuff in the kitchen that'll help you sleep some of it off. I bit my lower lip as I eyed him. I didn't even like him. He was volatile and raw, the complete opposite of what I went for. He was everything I would have steered clear of in my human days. One look at his face, a second glance at his eyes, would shred any pretense of humanity. Getting close to him would be akin to jumping into a volcano. And yet, in this exact moment of time, I couldn't stop my desires to feel the burn I knew he could deliver. I couldn't stop staring at him. I won't sleep with you. I could be that man. Actually, I normally am that man, but not with you. I had to stop staring at him. I'm not asking you to. I should I should have let the subject drop, but I couldn't stop myself from asking. But since we are on the topic, what's wrong with me? You're the relation type. And no matter how much of a human we pry from your clinging hands, it cloys to you. Just like the girlishness of your perfume and ruffled skirts. I don't need you looking all doe-eyed at me in the morning. You are such an ass. I got up and walked out of the room. My shoulders connected with his arm as I pushed past him, but it wasn't very satisfactory since it didn't bulge him at all. And I, end up, I ended up bouncing a couple of steps off my path. <laughs> I walked into the kitchen, swearing revenge on Cupid and determined to find some sleeping pills myself. I looked upwards and then spoke in a hushed tone so fate couldn't hear me from the other room. Look at what you've done to me. I'll, I will never speak to you again after this. Need help? I turned to see Lars coming up behind me in the kitchen. What? Did no one wear a shirt anymore? I looked upward. This doesn't change anything. I didn't realize you were still here. I turned. The counter at my back as he came forward and leaned against the opposite counter. Could I really sleep with death? Long commute, he grinned as his eyes made their way up 
from my bare feet to my thighs before the hem of my long t-shirt I wore to sleep covered them. Maybe I could give this a try. His hand came to rest on the side of the counter I leaned against. I knew the type of help he was looking to offer and my eyes drifted to his lips. I couldn't deny I was tempted, but for some reason it felt like eating low-fat frozen yogurt when I was craving ice cream. <laughs> Still, I didn't turn away when he leaned in a little closer. Frozen yogurt tasted better than nothing. I knew if it wasn't for whatever Cupid did to me, I wouldn't be doing this, but I couldn't figure out the harm in it. I'd be, I'd be reborn in less than two weeks from now. I forget all of this. It was like a free pass. Why not? What are you doing? Fate asked from the entrance of the kitchen. He was speak, clearly speaking to Lars, not me. Now, there was the ice cream man, but he was closed for business. Lars' hand dropped from beside me, and the gap between us widened a couple of inches. I was seeing if Carmen needed a little help. I've got it covered. I could almost smell the male testosterone party going on, but I couldn't figure out where fate had gotten an invite. Had he just turned me down? Was a girl supposed to starve? It couldn't be jealousy after he so graciously, graciously explained how he wasn't interested. What was his deal? I didn't realize you were up, Lars now moved to the opposite counter, a few feet between us now. I was just looking for a bite to eat. You said you weren't hungry. Well, now I am. Fate stepped deeper into the kitchen. Lars put his hands up. Mom steak? I watched as he stared back in out of the kitchen. Was this a joke? Oh no, I yelled and grabbed his arm. What are you doing? He doesn't make this decision. I pointed a finger at Fate. He smiled and then pulled away. Lars nodded to Fate and then disappeared up the stairs. Fate rounded on me as soon as Lars was gone. What do you think you're doing? Really? This is almost as bad as when you asked twice. It wasn't obvious and still no shirt. Although if I was a guy with his chest, I guess I wouldn't have been anxious to wear one either. He wouldn't have fixed the issue. Why do you say that? Because that's not how Cupid works. They're always target. There, there's always a target. I wasn't going to argue. I knew he was right. I felt this standing next to him. It was a fight to just keep my hands to myself. He might have taken the edge off though. I dry swallowed as he got closer and closer to me. If you're going to do something about it, at least do it with the person it was meant for. His arms wrapped around my waist and lifted me to the counter. He stepped in between my thighs and the long t-shirt I wore to bed hitched up in the process. I felt his thick, hard erection pressed against me. When Cupid played his games, there's always an intended target. His eyes were on my mouth as he spoke, and then his lips grazed mine as he said his last words, you weren't intended for Lars. He might have acted disinterest before, but with his hips pressed to mine, I knew this wasn't just for me. My legs wrapped around him, trying to bring him close to me. His hands tangled in my hair as his lips covered mine. I felt like I couldn't breathe and I didn't care. There was something dangerous about going down this road with fate. There was no control here, only pure sensation and intense soul-consuming feeling. His arms wrapped around my hips and pulled me snug to him. He was carrying me somewhere, but I didn't care as long as he went with me. And then I was falling backwards, and he was follow following me down. His hard body moved over mine, pressing me into the bed, and all I could do was moan, with moan the exquisite feeling. I couldn't get close enough to him. I wanted to crawl inside of him, and the way he gripped me back, I knew he was feeling it too. Nothing registered except need. 
What little clothes we had on weren't even removed, but shoved out of the way, and then he was pressing into me. It felt like nothing I ever experienced before. I didn't know if this was because of Cupid's interference, or it would have been like this with him anyway. I wrestled with him to get on top. My thighs clenched to his sides as I leaned over him, running my hands and then my mouth, mouth over his chest. I bit and I sucked at his nipples as he grabbed my ass and then my hips, pulling me down onto him when I was going too slow for his taste. I need more, he said as he took the top position again and lifted my one leg to his shoulders before pressing deeper into me. He stared down at me as he slowly moved in and out, and then I saw him lose control until he was, he was pounding into me. It was too much and not enough all at the same time. And then we both were coming and I didn't want it to stop. We sagged in exhaustion. I was still in shock over the intensity of what had just happened. He was still in me, resting his weight on his arms. His lips were telling, telling along my collarbone when he paused his action and whispered against my skin. You're still going back, right? He didn't ask in a, I'm hoping you might stay now. He asked in a, you know this changed nothing kind of way. I closed my eyes trying to keep control. I hadn't expected anything from him, hadn't been looking for it. So why did that hurt so badly? Of course I am. I wanted to pretend he hadn't said anything, but I couldn't. Hyped up on Cupid's stuff or not, my pride was stronger than any love potion. I stared straight into his eyes. Get off. What's wrong? Nothing. I need to use the bathroom. I wanted to scream for him to get off me, but I wouldn't. That would let him know he'd gotten to me. Did I see regret there? It didn't matter. I was too mad to try and find reasons for his actions. He didn't initially move, and I needed to get away from him. You're heavy. Get off of me. I loved his weight a few minutes ago. Now I felt suffocated. He finally gave, and I slid out from beneath him in my urgency to get away from him as soon as I had room. Where you going? He asked as I headed toward the door. I already told you. I swung by the kitchen and found the sleeping pills and then found a spare room to go crash. And that's the end of chapter 25. Stay tuned for the next chapter.